this onset, it can affect the lungs. It just causes massive swelling. And Elephantiasis is an extreme thickening of the skin and underlying tissue. When the mosquito bites a human, hundreds of tiny larvae swarm into the bloodstream. Next, they travel to the lymphatic system, a crucial network in the human body. Undetected in the lymphatic system, they grow into adult worms three to four inches long. The adult worms mate and produce even more larvae. These microscopic larvae leave the safety of the lymph vessels and nodes to invade other parts of the body. During the day, they lie low in the lungs, but at night, the drop in our body temperature triggers the larvae to move out of the lungs to their next destination. The unsuspecting mosquito transports the larvae to a new host, and the life cycle repeats itself. Most severe symptoms began after tangled bits of dead worms plugged up his lymphatic system. Lymph fluid built up in his legs and testicles and leaked out of his pores. Filariasis affects 120 million people worldwide, mostly in the tropics. If you're traveling to a region where filariasis is common, a little bit of prevention can go a long way. Use insect repellent and mosquito netting at night.
Peripheral blood smear is a direct way to diagnose filariasis by looking at microfilaria in the bloodstream. However, there is limitation in this technique. As we know, microfilaria has nocturnal behavior, which hide in our lungs during the day and only appear in the bloodstream at night. This can easily yield a false negative result if the blood sample is taken at the wrong timing. The blood sampling is best to be done between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. And this time limitation may cause inconvenience to both the patients and the clinicians. To solve this problem, recent method has introduced immunological assay to diagnose filariasis. This method makes use of the concept of antibody antigen binding to detect the presence of filarial antigen in our bloodstream. This method can be done at any time as filarial antigen can still be present in the blood even when they are hiding in patients' lungs. Immunochromatography test tree has been widely used for diagnosis purpose. It can be done by adding several drops of blood sample on the sample pad of the strip. Capillary action will pull the blood up along the strip. When the blood samples reaches the colloidal goal area containing enzyme level antifilarial antibody, filarial antigen in the blood sample will bind to the antibody to form immune complexes. These immune complexes, then by following the capillary action, will move to the test region of the strip. The test region also contains antifilarial antibody that will sandwich the filarial antigen together with the enzyme level antibody. Unbound antibody will go to the control zone, which controls secondary antibody that trap these excess antibodies at both the test zone and control zone, the enzyme catalyzes formation of a substrate to a colored compound which produces a visible line on both regions. Formation of red line on the test zone and control zone indicates the positive results for filarial antigen.